A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Wheelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory, a proud supporter of WQPT, has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Now providing live stream capabilities for viewing your loved one's funeral or memorial service at their chapel in Rock Island. Businesses are finally reopening, but what does reopening look like? And can some of these places be able to make up for all that lost revenue? We talk about that in the cities. Why is it taking so long for Illinois to reopen? Well, this state is one of a few that looks at 28 days of sustained drop in COVID cases before even considering reopening. The benchmark for most other states is 14 days. Phase four of reopening titled revitalization is scheduled for the end of June, but are we ready? We talked with the head of the Moline Center Main Street. It's Jeff Manis. What is the status of downtown right now? It's been three going on four months of a COVID-19 pandemic and businesses downtown are hit hard. You know, Jim, it, it, it's certainly no secret or mystery that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected every Main Street across the entire world. And as it pertains to downtown Moline, you know, it's been exactly 88 days since Governor J.B. Pritzker um, instituted his disaster proclamation. And it's been, you know, certainly a long 88 days, um, specifically, um, like for example, the Taxlayer Center. I very quickly on Facebook just kind of went to their Facebook page to, to see exactly how many events that they've either had to cancel, suspend, postpone, whatever word we want to call it. And there's been, for my, for my count, about 18 or so. And, and that obviously is going to have a, a substantial impact, not only to downtown Moline, but throughout the entire Quad Cities. When the good people at the Tax Slayer Center bring in uh, top talent like a Paul McCartney, or, or as it pertains to this conversation, uh, a rock band like Tool, that is drawing in people from not only all over the Quad Cities region, but pretty much like a four, sometimes five state area. And they, they stay in our hotels, they eat in our restaurants. So they, those are impacts that uh, work their way into the millions of dollars of, of, of lost revenues for, for, for the Quad Cities. Um, additionally, you know, throughout those 88 days, uh, our, our, our downtown's bars and restaurants have either been completely closed or had to drastically alter their, their business plan on, on how they do things and how they service the residents of Moline and the Quad City citizens. So uh, recently though, you know, it, it, the state of Illinois had, had transitioned into stage three, which allows uh, for outdoor dining. And the elected officials at the city of Moline, specifically uh, Mayor Acri, with her emergency dec declaration to kind of ease the restric restrictions and code of ordinances for what outdoor dining looks like in, in downtown Moline, we now have some of the coolest uh, outdoor dining setup. So, you, you know, if you're hungry for a bite, um, there you, you really won't be able to find a safer, uh, more inviting outdoor dining area than in downtown Moline. Well, when you're thinking of downtown or anywhere else, you're thinking of like almost four types of businesses. The, the small business that just opened, the small business that has well established, the older business that's been around a while, and the older business that's having a problem with change in the first place and may not have survived this because they weren't, as you said, nimble, able to adapt. Let's start with the new businesses. Have they been particularly hard hit because Moline's downtown has really become vibrant over the last few years and there's so many new entrepreneurs down there? You know, one of the, the most dynamic things that I've seen in response to this is the overall resiliency of these small businesses. I mean, that's the nature of a small business. They're, they're entrepreneurial in, in nature and, and entrepreneurials are as creative uh, as, as minded people that, that, that you can find anywhere. So whether it has been through altering their menus to make it more travel friendly, because not all food, especially in fine dining, travels well. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether, whether it's through coming up with cool 
creative ways to, to throw it in a to-go container, make it more street food-like, has, has been pretty fascinating and interesting to watch. But the key, as we were saying, is being nimble. I mean, some of these yes. older businesses, you think of Lago Marcino's, which is doing very well, well, I shouldn't say doing very well, but is surviving this as Adapting. far as we know. Yes. Adapting is a perfect word. There's other maybe family businesses that weren't able to adapt as well. I mean, is there a big learning curve because of COVID-19 for the business world? Undoubtedly, there's a substantial learning curve. Uh, me and I'd say every small business owner and large business owner, we're, we're pretty well blindsided by this whole scenario and situation, unfortunately. Uh, it, it, it came on and it came on fast. And again, the adaptability it had to, these businesses really had to think very, very quickly on their feet. So uh, the new ones, the old ones, we're, we're very much neighborhood-like in downtown Moline. If we leaned on each other, there's been some really cool collaboration with and between businesses to, to respond to these quarantine, stay-at-home orders that have come down through the state of Illinois. Because the other thing, and it's a really good point about how quickly the area had to shut down, yeah. and also how slowly it's reopening. I think a lot of people thought maybe this will last until Memorial Day and not much further than that. Well, now we're talking past 4th of July and beyond that. Moline Center integral in trying to make sure that this area stays vibrant. What are you trying to do as far as the reopening of the downtown area? Well, again, it's one situation I kind of already addressed with the outdoor dining. Uh, right. Prior to COVID-19, uh, the, the, the city of Moline had a playbook or a manual for what you can and in a lot of situations cannot, cannot do for outdoor dining. Uh, it, uh, there was a lot of aesthetics and thoughts that went into how it is, is really supposed to look. And it was a well, certainly well thought out manual or outdoor dining guide uh, to and, and for these bars and restaurants to kind of take over city streetscape. Uh, and, and in response to that, uh, the city of Moline has kind of put that guide on the shelf and it's gonna remain on the shelf until we can ultimately and hopefully sometime soon enter into that phase five for the reopening of Illinois. Yeah, as best as you can. Yes. We were talking about, as you said, the bars and the restaurants and you brought up uh, the Tax Layer Center. I wanna to get to that as well, but sure. the Tax Layer Center not only is, is the big events, as you said, they haven't been able to have a wedding. They haven't been able to have small conferences. Nothing's been going on there. And let's be honest, the weddings and the small conferences also feed places like the new hotels that are downtown, whether it's the Element or the new Access. That's another area that has to be some concern, uh, especially since they're really relatively new uh, hospitality centers that have a little deeper pockets perhaps, but still those pockets aren't deep enough all the time. Oh yeah, most certainly. And, and, and that's one great thing about downtown Moline is our uh, accommodation potential that we have with, the, with our four hotels, whether it's the Element, the Axis, Stony Creek, or the Radisson. We, especially prior to all of this pandemic, uh, had a great positioning for accommodating our guests from outside of our region, even individuals from within our region. A, a staycation was, was definitely right. um, a very real thing uh, in, in downtown Moline. Uh, so all of that said, it's my opinion, and I'm not alone with this, if you were to talk to, to, to Dave from Visit Quad Cities, for example, uh, I believe that the Quad Cities, specifically downtown Moline, is gonna have a very unique vantage point towards other destinations that were often thought of for conferences or weddings. Because the simple fact of the matter is we weren't one of those red hot zones for the pandemic and COVID-19. Whereas a, a, a destination like Chicago or some of the other major metropolitan areas, not only in the Midwest, but throughout the country, are going to ultimately look maybe le a little less attractive for and hosting major events. So a region or a uh, I, I guess a, 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 a district like like the Quad Cities is, is going to be definitely more attractive to, towards that. So we're working hard to make sure our marketing, our region, um, especially in response to COVID-19, is, is in line and ready and teed up to, to start attracting that when the timing is right and, and it becomes safe again. Looking forward quite a bit and, and into the fall and into the winter months. Um, I mean, downtown Moline has done... Uh, let's say Bass Street Landing right now, closed to outdoor concerts. Uh, but the lighting of the commons comes up uh, in the wintertime. You've got uh, the holiday uh, walks that go on downtown now. 
Are those being rethought of now in the idea of two things? First off, crowd control. Now people are a little more worried about crowds. And second off, whether or not there would be a second or a third uh, iteration of uh, COVID-19. Yeah, Jim, we uh, undoubtedly are uh, closely monitor monitoring the situation yeah. as we possibly can. Uh, like the Thursday night summer concert series at Bass Street Landing, for example. We have suspended those until further notice. They typically run from Memorial Day um, to Labor Day. Uh, th this year, for example, we had and, and organized 15 concerts, consecutive concerts over, over all of those Thursdays that had some of the, the best talent, musical talent and otherwise, um, that we were going to be bringing to downtown Moline to the Bass Street Landing. And, and that decision, it, 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 it was definitely and undoubtedly a difficult one. And just as soon as we possibly can, and we deem the situation uh, safe enough to uh, bring a, well north of a thousand people to Bass Street Landing, uh, we, we will be doing that immediately. And pretty much all of those bands that I had pretty much already uh, advanced the contracts with for, right. for the 2020 uh, outdoor uh, Thursday Night Summer Concert Series uh, are, are ready. They're they're hey, to get back on stage. Up. Yeah, their their guitars are tuned up. Yeah, absolutely. Their amps are ready. They're ready to, to load it all up into their trucks and their and, vans and, and their cars. And to, God to bless them. Playing. A lot of them have been on Facebook. They've been performing their hearts yeah. out for people uh, left and right. Let me talk about something else looking even sure. further to the future. And that you had the uh, Urban Land Institute uh, that was here uh, trying to develop a downtown Moline that marries itself with a lot of, what, 12 acres of downtown prime property once the old I-74 bridge is gone. What is the status of that right now? And, and how does COVID-19 actually impact how you think about the future of downtown? Well, as it pertains to the development of the Illinois side, the Moline, Illinois side of the I-74 bridge construction and redevelopment, because they're like, like you said, there's many, many acres Absolutely, that yeah. are going to be primed and ready and teed up for, for development. Um, unlike the outdoor dining guide, that is not put on the shelf. It is still undoubtedly something that the city of Moline um, and many other stakeholders that are involved in our committees and our boards uh, still hold under a very uh, defined laser focus. Some of it has had to kind of get suspended. Um, uh, the, like the good folks at Renew Moline, for example, they were going to have a lot of community involvement and community interaction to, to host I guess you could call them think tanks or tours of that area to try to understand and gain perspective of what it can potentially look like. Some of those are gonna to have to be suspended, but the construction goes on. We, the, the, the keystone piece to the first archway just recently got in place. We're at Western Illinois Riverfront Campus right now and you can just from right over there see the cranes swinging and uh, construction materials getting installed to that bridge. So. We, we, despite a pandemic, we can't lose a single step on how we ready ourselves as a community, as a city, to develop that property down there. Yeah, because uh, like, like you're saying, the construction's continuing and you do have to look forward to the day when there is a vaccine, when the pandemic is done, when it's in our rearview mirror and life gets back to whatever normal is going to be. And, and I say it with just as much confidence as I did prior to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and is that here at the city of Moline, the best is really yet to come. That, that bridge is not gonna only serve as an interstate link between Iowa and Illinois and the rest of the country. It's also a, a modern day work of art that will draw people in from really all over the entire world. And, and, and we're going to be here to make sure that we are doing our very best to capitalize on that scenario and situation. Jeff Manis, Moline Center Main Street Manager. Well, will the show ever go on? Brett Hitchcock from Circuit 21 has got a unique way of bringing performances back to the cities. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but first, the River Music Experience has been bringing the music to you with a series of curbside concerts through July 21st. Mo Carter will be one of the featured musicians on July 16th, and for a sneak peek of some of the music she plays, Mo joined us at the uh, Black Box Theater in Moline and recorded this song. It's called Crumbled. Yeah. 
That's Mo Carter with an original called Crumble. To find out more about those curbside concerts at the RME, you can visit the River Music Experience website anytime you want. The date for Iowa and Illinois residents to still be counted for the 2020 census has been changed in part because of COVID-19. And if you haven't taken part, you still have time. Self-response will now continue until the end of October. You can make a difference in your community just by being counted. The census counts everyone in this country, and that really means everyone. A hospital patient, yes, that person counts. Newborn Benjamin, yeah, little Ben now counts. Two families that live in the same house, sure thing, they all count. Or David, who's living in his cousin Daniel's garage, he also counts. The census counts everyone to make things better for all of us. Well, the show must go on, and Circuit 21 has come up with some unique ideas on just how to do that in Rock Island. What's next for the downtown Rock Island Theater? Well, joining us is Brett Hitchcock right now from Circuit 21. The key to COVID-19 for you mm -hmm. is to think out of the box, and that's exactly what you're doing right now. Absolutely. Yeah, we had, you know, being closed for three months now, and the start of our fourth month, we really are trying to figure out what we can do to, number one, have people entertain. I mean, we've been we've done some things through social media and, and, and things like that, which people have really appreciated and there's been a lot of support for. But how do we really get live entertainers in front of people? And subsequently, how can we try to make a little bit of money? 
you know, having no income for four months is, is difficult. And uh, you know, thankfully, we've had a couple of good years, so we had a little bit of a reserve set aside. Um, but the idea about the marquee came up, and we thought, you know, why don't we put performers on the marquee? We'll block off the street, the half a block that we have in front of our buildings, um, put our tables and chairs out there from our secondary space, the speakeasy, and we'll entertain people from the marquee. So we keep that social distancing. The performers aren't coming within six feet of the audience, and the audience is all social distance as well. They're all spread out, so there's no issues. And uh, we had an overwhelming response. We thought it was gonna do well, um, but it sold out in less than 24 hours. And I, we didn't anticipate that. I mean, it was just, it was wonderful to see how quickly it was going. And we were doing everything online. So from like two hours from launching it, we had already sold almost 50 tickets online. <laughs> and we came in the next morning and we had another almost 70 that, were, that had, we had sold. And so, you know, when we had 25 or so phone calls that people had left messages, you know, wanting to buy them as well. So I mean, by, you know, nine o'clock the next morning, there wasn't a single seat left. I think in a way, and, and perhaps you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, mm -hmm. is that COVID-19 has made us um, a little more aware of things that we took for granted. And one of them is the theater and socializing and music and concerts and Absolutely. being entertained, things that we got so used to. Yeah. And now, you know, it's not just all TV and Netflix. Yeah, I mean, I think people are tired of, of watching Netflix and Hulu and, and they've caught up on all their series and they want live entertainment. They long for that live entertainment. They long to go out and be in public and go to a concert or go to a festival. You know, they're just, they're so tired of being cooped up uh, that they want to get out. And, uh, you know, I think people are, what we're seeing is they're, they're being socially responsible to some degree when they're still doing that, knowing that we're still, this pandemic is still here and, uh, you know, it's still bad, but at the same time, you've got to get out and you've got to be entertained. And again, I think to your point that how quickly it sold out is just, is, is just kind of reconfirming that, that yeah, yeah, people want to be entertained by live performers and they want to get back out and start living their lives again. So does that make you think that this shouldn't be just a one-shot deal? Is this something that you might be doing a little more of in the summer? Well, it's, we're hoping to be open soon. We're hoping Absolutely. that next weekend the governor's, you know, the governor's gonna come and he's gonna get to phase four and we're gonna be open at hopefully around 50% capacity and we will be doing things inside. The challenge with these kinds of shows like we're doing is, you know, we're not used to doing outdoor shows. So the weather doesn't really matter to us because we're inside, but now you're taking into account, you know, what's the weather going to be? Is it going to be a downpour? Are we going to have to shuffle things around? You know, getting permits from the city, you know, getting fencing arranged to fence off the street. There's just a lot of things that go into doing these outdoor shows um, that we don't normally do. And so, you know, our hope is that, yes, we can, you know, we, we do the outdoor shows this weekend, they go over great, but then we want to get back to, to doing what we do. And that's entertaining people inside the theater, you know, providing them a meal and, uh, and, and, and giving them that experience. And you're saying 50% occupancy is what you really need, not just a group of 50 or 15, because there's no way you can make ends meet with that limited of an audience. Correct, for us, you know, and, and, and as we understand it, you know, your staff counts against the 50. So next week, if Governor uh, Pritzker goes out and gets it to phase four and just goes to 50 people, for an example, we have 20 people in the cast of Saturday Night Fever. That's where we're opening with. So you knock that down to 30, you know, right off the bat, plus our food and beverage staff, plus our waiters, plus our frontline people out in the ticket office. I mean, we're gonna be down to seating almost, you know, for just a handful of people. And in that enormous theater, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a good experience. It's not gonna, the, the actors aren't gonna be able to draw any energy from the audience. The audience is gonna, it's gonna be awkward for the audience because there's gonna be nobody there. So it's our hope um, that he will open not at 50 people, but rather at 50% occupancy. That allows us to open and not be upside down. You know, 50 people, we, we, we would open and we would lose money, and again, it would be a bad experience. At 50%, we can open, we can get people in, because we have thousands of people that had already bought tickets for the shows coming up this year that we have to get back in. At 50%, we can start to do that and still be socially distant, going to every other table, and uh, using some other measures to make sure that everyone stays safe. Now you deal with actors, you deal mm -hmm. with uh, stage managers, behind the scenes people, as you said, your staff and crew mm -hmm. and all that. What are they going through right now? Because as, as we were saying, the audience is chomping at the bit. Yeah. Oh my gosh, musicians and actors must they, be even more so. They're going crazy. Uh, I know that you know we, we're trying to talk to the staff as much as possible. All of our waiters are going nuts. Our food and beverage staff is going nuts. We're, we're getting calls from one of our dishwashers a couple of times a week. You know, when are we opening? When are we opening? I need to go back to work. I'm going stir crazy. And for the actors, it's the same thing. You know, most of our actors uh, for the show came in from out of town. Um, and when we closed in March, we gave them the option of either going home 
or they could stay in a house that we own that the actors live in, in Rock Island. Um, several of them were from Manhattan, and from New York City and some of the other boroughs. They chose to stay. Right. You know, they could see the handwriting on the wall that it was going to be really bad you know, because of the population base. They were correct. So they stayed behind. Um, they've been doing Zoom rehearsals once a week where they've been getting together you know, with some of the other local actors that we have and some of the others that went home to other parts of the country. Uh, and they've all been Zooming in and, and working on the show to kind of keep it fresh and keep it ready to go. So when we do get the okay and we get that definitive date from the governor, we can get going as soon as possible. So, but they're, they're, just like, they're just like the general public. They're going nuts. You know, they're used to performing. And you know, a lot of them had contracts lined up through the rest of the year and those pretty much all are shot. You know, because everything's either closed or you know everything's been pushed back, um, and so it's a it's a scary time for for actors. You know, just not knowing what when the next contract is going to come. You know, as theaters stagger, you know, an opening here and opening there. You know, it just it's a it's a really tough situation. But we all want to get back to work. I think we all want to be somewhat normal again and get back on and put on our work clothes. I think for the first time a couple weeks ago, I put on work clothes again for you know, three months. I thought, well, this actually kind of feels good. I forgot what this was like. Instead of getting up and putting on shorts and a t-shirt and a hat in the morning, you know, having to, to get ready and, uh, and, and put on khakis and, and, and a dress shirt. It just was, it was nice. It was a good feeling to kind of get back to that being normal again. Thanks, Brett. And of course, you can keep up on what the Circa 21 Dinner Theater is doing by going to their website. And of course, we want you to support local performers, local theaters, any type of music concert halls once they start reopening after the COVID-19 pandemic. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Whelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory, a proud supporter of WQPT, has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Now providing live stream capabilities for viewing your loved one's funeral or memorial service at their chapel in Rock Island.